Hey, take a look at this picture I'm gonna put up on the screen. Wow, what a narrow fairway. Now you're probably never gonna actually play a fairway this narrow or a golf hole this narrow, but I'll bet there's a hole out there that seems this narrow to you. So right after this, let me give you a few tips that are gonna help you hit the ball in this fairway or in a very narrow fairway much more often and lower your scores. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. So we're talking about hitting the ball into a very narrow fairway. Now there's more to hitting this shot than just physical. For example, you also have physiological things that you can do to help your body prepare to more successfully play a shot this challenging. For example, first thing you should do when you're standing back, let's say that I'm driving this way off camera, First thing you should be doing, taking a big deep cleansing breath. When you blow it out, I want you to feel your shoulders drop. And I want you to fill your mind with the emotions of joy and gratitude. So it's, a smile comes to my face. I feel joy and gratitude. It's just like that. It's just a quick release of all the tension and to put back in perspective what's really important in life. This shot is not everything, even if the club championship is on the line. There's many things in your life that you have to be grateful and joyful for. All right, next physiologically, as you're standing behind your golf ball here, I want you to see the golf ball just splitting between those tree branches flying straight, landing and running out as you pick up your tee, and all in that two to three seconds while you're visualizing this, I even want you to go to the point where you hear your playing partners say, great drive or nice drive. Practice doing that in your head before you ever get to this hole. Do it at home every night. You see it, you pick up the tee, you hear nice shot. So those two things you can do physiologically to prepare you to make yourself more successful. And then there's strategy. You can be strategic about this shot. Now, my go-to is to pull out a hybrid instead of a driver if I face a hole that is that sketchy and I might make a big number if I can't place the ball successfully in the fairway off the tee. You should also have some kind of go-to club that, or go-to club and swing that you develop that can hit the ball down the middle, even if you're giving up a ton of distance. What I will do is I will play the hole backwards from the cup all the way back to the tee. I'll ask myself, where would I like to be hitting my second shot from? And where can I do it where I can reach there safely nine or even 10 times out of 10? Now, for most of you out there, you're carrying a handicap of some kind. So I want you to also Look at the scorecard and see what the handicap number is for that hole. If it is less or a smaller number than your handicap index, that means that you get a shot on that hole. So strategically, I want you to throw out birdies and pars there. If you get a hole like that, where it's the number two or one handicap, and let's say you're a nine, well, you get a shot on this hole you're looking to make the easiest tap-in bogey you can make, especially if this hole really gets in your head, very challenging for you specifically, and you have a history of making big numbers on that hole. What you're gonna do instead is throw out the idea of trying to cover the distance in regulation. Yeah, even if you're a five, six, eight handicap, you can take something much less than driver, get it in the fairway. You don't have to cover the distance in two, you can even set yourself up for some kind of pitch or short wedge shot in three and set up a two putt tap in bogey. Let's look at a quick scenario. Let's say even your uh, nine handicap and the number one handicap hole on your course is a very, very narrow 410 yard par four. Instead of trying for a driver, what you can do is you could even pull out a four iron or a hybrid 
and you're just trying to get the ball, let's say you're just trying to get the ball out there, oh, 180 or 190 yards off the tee, instead of your normal 240 or 250, because hitting it that far will give you a much greater chance of going deep in the trees where you can't position your second shot. Then after you've gone, let's say 180 and it rolls an extra 10 because it's landing in the fairway instead of on the green, that would leave you at 220 left. This way you can almost play the same thing on your second shot, the same club, maybe even a five or a six iron if you don't feel comfortable off the turf with a hybrid or a, let's say a four iron. You could play a six iron. Let's say you, you hit your six iron 160 yards or 165 yards. Give yourself an extra few for the roll. You're 175 yards down the fairway in two. You have almost had no risk of getting in trouble on either shot and now you're left with a shot of about 50 yards or so. What it gives you the luxury of doing on the second shot is laying up short of all the greenside trouble and if you're good enough, you're fancy enough, it allows you to also play for an angle into the flag. So you're planning this from the hole backwards. You see the flag in the left, you're going to pitch your second shot with the six iron out to the right. Leave yourself 50 yards. Now you're just trying to pitch it on the green to, oh, 20 feet, middle of the green. Roll the putt up to two or three feet. Tap in for bogey. Play the hole backwards. And that strategically will tell you a whole plan where you can start off with a much more conservative club and avoid the big number. Physically, there's a couple things you can do with your golf swing to prepare you for a hole like this. Number one, I would say, is tempo. What people do, most golfers do, when they get on a hole like you see in this photograph or some of these other photographs I've shown you throughout the video where the, it's very narrow, a lot of trees, a lot of trouble on the sides of the fairway, is most golfers get short with the backswing, they get quick in transition, and they speed up. They get very tight and short and quick. So what you want to do, of course, on the range, you've got to have rehearsed this, even in the backyard, is do some tempo swings, long and slow, so it would be in one, two, three, one, two, three. And that kind of tempo is what you need to get into the fairway on a hole like that. If you get short and quick and abrupt and tight, well, it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So. Look at it from this angle again, and one, two, three, one, two, three. And that's the swing that I picture when I really need to hit it straight, is the smooth, not all out, but very free and relaxed tempo swing. Almost think Fred Couples, if you'd like to. And the last and most important thing, and this is the toughest thing of all, of course, but if you had to indulge yourself in only one swing thought on a hole like this, the most important thing for hitting that fairway is to get the club squared up at impact. So whether you like to pick out a little discoloration mark or a cigarette butt or something out here in front of the ball, that's one way to do it. Nicholas did it, called it a little intermediate spot to hit over. But whatever you do, you've got to picture that club face coming back to where you started from. The club face, especially on a longer club that you'll be teeing off with, is going to be 80% or more the influence on where the golf ball is going to end up going. It's about 80% the angle of the face. So don't worry if you're an outside inner or an inside outer. You get that face square and all will be forgiven. All right, let's see if I can knock one right down that narrow fairway, following all my same advice. <sighs> Breathe, lower shoulders. See it splitting, smile on my face. I see it splitting the fairway. Thinking tempo. I think I did it. Now you see the numbers on the screen in the shot, a really, really good shot. It would have made uh, that, the rest of that tight hole very, very easy. One of my personal things to do when I play a really difficult long par four 
with a lot of trouble is I try to figure out what kind of par 3 I want to turn it into. I can't always turn a hard hole into a 90 or 100 yard wedge fest. Sometimes it's a little bit too dangerous to try to knock it down that far. So sometimes I'll just try to hit it to the 150 marker. Then you guessed it, what am I going to do on the range? I'm going to develop a really good, reliable 150 yard shot so that I have the luxury of taking less than driver and laying it back. In your case, you have the luxury of strokes. So if you get a stroke on that hole, consider trying to play, cover the distance in one extra shot. You won't believe the pressure this takes off your long game and how little you'll take extra strokes when you take a strategy like this. So, hey, hopefully some of these tips will stick. You'll take a couple of them to heart. I'd love to know if you do. If you have any questions on anything I talked about in this video, I hope you leave them down in the comment section. Hey, thanks so much for watching and supporting my channel. I'm Steve. Head on over to hititlonger.com for over 100 more great articles and videos that I think are going to help you improve your game. And as usual, I will either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.